Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we're looking at exponents today. And we're going to focus on the basics of exponents, just how they work with positive numbers. Um, we're not going to get involved in anything beyond positive numbers with positive exponents. Just want to know basically how they work. So here are the parts of an exponent. You have the base, which is the larger number, in this case 12, and the exponent will be 3. The way we would say this is 12 to the power of 3. Um, 3 is a special number that you can also say it's 12 cubed, all right? But um, 12 to the power of 3 or 12 raised to the power of 3 or a base of 12 with an exponent 3. That's different ways that you may hear this said. Let's look at what it actually means. We're going to use the base of 4 and an exponent of 2 to show what this means. What it means is you take the base, in this case 4, and you multiply it times itself this many times, the exponent number of times. So 4 times itself twice, 4 times 4, and 4 times 4 is 16, but the point is that we're multiplying the base times itself. The biggest mistake that people make with exponents is to multiply 4 times 2. That is not what this means. 4 raised to the power of 2 or 4 to the power of 2 is 4 times itself, the base times itself, 2 times. It is not 4 times 2. You don't, do not multiply the base times the exponent. Biggest mistake that people make while working with exponents. So here's how they work. Exponents, if you've ever heard the phrase, this increases exponentially, this might make a little bit more sense when you look at this. We start with a base of 3, and I'm just going to work through this. 3 to the power of 0 is 1. This is a special case. Any number raised to the power of 0 will always give you 1. There's a good reason for that, but just remember, anything to the power of 0 is 1, and you'll be in good shape. Now, now is when we get started with kind of our more normal numbers. 3 to the power of 1 is simply 3. So that equals 3. 3 to the power of 2, and that's another special one. You could call that 3 squared. All right, 3 to the power of 2 is 3 times itself 2 times, which is equal to 9. 3 to the power of 3 will be 3 times itself 3 times. 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. 3 to the power of 4 means our base of 3 gets multiplied times itself 1, 2, 3, 4 times, which gives us 81. 3 to the power of 5 will be the base times itself 5 times, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, 5 times gives us 243. And you see that it, it increases like I said, exponentially. It starts out increasing by only 6, and then it increases by larger and larger amounts until by the time we get even bigger numbers, these numbers from, from one to the next are just huge increases. I just want to sort of reemphasize this idea. This is not the same as multiplication tables. It is the same with 3 to the power of 1 is the same as 3 times 1. But after that, none of them match up. 3 times 2 is not the same as 3 to the power of 2. 3 times 3 is not the same as 3 to the power of 3. So again, the number one mistake is over here when we try and think of this as multiplication tables. This is not multiplication tables. This is exponents. They're very different. All right, so kind of get that idea of multiplication tables kind of out of our heads, and, and we'll do a lot better. Let's go ahead and practice. We'll practice with this exponent 5 to the power of 3, or 5 cubed. What that means is 5 times 5 times 5. We multiply the base times itself three times. I would personally get out a calculator probably for this, 5 times 5 times 5, and, and make sure that I'm doing it accurately, because you end up with something like this, a pretty big number. When you're using exponents, you usually end up with pretty large numbers. And there it is, 5 to the power of 3 is equal to 125. Now I'm going to do one that's ridiculously large, 7 to the power of 11. That would mean 7 times itself 11 times. 
The biggest challenge with this is keeping track of how many sevens there are. And we have to count them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay. There are 11 there. And it's important that we multiply each one carefully. Sometimes that's 49 times 7 times 7 times 7. And we get this huge number, you know, almost 2 billion. Um, really ridiculous, um, ridiculously big number. When you're dealing with large numbers like this, there's actually, I want to show you a quick shortcut, um, especially for people getting into algebra and pre-algebra. Um, when, when you're using numbers this big, teachers usually, and most people, won't ask you to do it in your head to show that you know how to do multiplication. So seriously, get your calculator and make sure that you do it using your calculator. If you have a Texas Instrument calculator, a button will commonly look like this. If you have a Casio, your button will look something more like that. These are your exponent buttons on the calculator. So try that out. After you multiply this all the way out, instead try using this button, 7, this button, 11, and hit the equal sign. See if you get the same answer. 7, then use this button, and then hit the 11 and see if you get the same answer. Um, if you're, again, this one's a Texas Instrument. This one here is a Casio. I've also seen ones that say X to the power of Y um, instead of having a blank box like the Casio does. So any of these will be your exponent button. Let's practice using our calculator with another ridiculous question. 3 to the power of 15. Just put in 3. Then whatever your exponent button is on your calculator, press 15 and then hit the equal sign. Did you get 14,348,907? That's what I got. And again, I was testing it with both of my calculators just to make sure on um, both the Casio and the Texas Instrument, the most common calculators that I found with, with pre-algebra students and algebra students. So there we go. That's how you do it. Now, what does this mean? It means 3 times itself 15 times. If you want to check your work and hit 3 times 3 times 3 and try and keep track until you get up to 15, um, you should get the same answer. But again, this is a nice shortcut that will help you with exponents so that you make sure that you're getting it accurately and effectively and correct. All right, that was the basics of exponents. Again, positive exponents with positive bases. Hope that that lesson was helpful for you. If it was, go ahead and subscribe to my channel for more math lessons and have a wonderful day.